Hey guys, today we're gonna show you how we do the tomato nutrients and then do a couple other odd jobs. While mom's getting the nutrients ready, I'll show you the tank over here. There's two tanks for the Dutch bucket system. This one here and that one over there. That one's filled up. We just need to fill up this one today. They're both 100 gallons. So down here in the bottom of the tank is a one-third horse uh, sump pump. And dad put an extra fitting in right here, so that way in case the pump goes bad, he can just take it out and replace it. This up here is a Venturi fitting. That way after the pump is done running, the nutrient water doesn't continue to siphon out. This is the inlet, the water inlet, and then this is a float that dad put on in case mom turns it on and uh, forgets about it, it won't overflow. And then down here is a drain pipe so after the season's done, mom can open this up and all of this will drain out to waste and it just makes it a lot easier to clean up. So what we have here is our hydro grow, vine crop, and the calcium nitrate. So we gotta weigh these out. On the directions here are for the larger blue tanks for a bigger system, but since I only have the 100 gallon tank, I do have directions here of how many ounces are each to use. And then we can't just put these right into the tanks. We have to mix them in with warm water separately until they're fully dissolved in the water. Because if you don't, then all the salts come out and they don't, it doesn't mix up really good. So we're going to get some warm water from the head house and we'll go from there. It's filled up here. It takes a couple minutes. And it says to use one gallon of water. I usually use a little bit more. This is a three gallon bucket that I have because I can't handle the five gallon buckets. So I want to talk a little bit about the um, EC for tomatoes. So you want the target range about 2.3 to 2.5. And the mixture I'm going to do here is assuming your source water is 0.3 EC. Mine's 0.4 from when I had my source water done. And so it's pretty close. I've had good luck with it for these past six years, so I'm not going to change it. So I'm going to measure out the hydrogo first. So for my one gallon, I need 13 ounces of hydro growth. I have an old scale here that's from our old business days. It's the old um, postage scale. It works perfect for this. So we're going to go ahead and use this. Zero it out for the container. And I just have 13 ounces. So I'm just going to measure some out. There we go. So I went ahead and marked on my measuring cup here because I don't want to bring the scale out every time I go to um, fill up the nutrient tank, which is sometimes twice a week. So I mark on here for the hydro grow what the level is, you know, how many ounces are in the um, cup here. So I just fill it up every time and just do it that way. And then I'm going to go over and get my handy dandy stirring stick. And you always have to be really careful. The nutrients really like to get stuck in the inside of the um, uh, measuring cup. So you want to make sure you keep that clean so every time you um, weigh it out or measure it out it's the same. <laughs> Pipes work really good. I usually do this on the ground but we're doing it up here on the table make it a little bit easier. So you want to mix this up until all the nutrients are dissolved in here. I'm just doing one of the nutrients in here, the, the hydro grow. I'm not going to put the calcium nitrate in here because you'll get the fertilizer salt. So you want to make sure you do each one separate. So as soon as the tank is filled up, I'm going to dump this one in, go back into the head house, get some more warm water, and do the calcium nitrate. I just always like to give it a little stir in the inside here. Just to make sure it's all... There we go. So now we're going to do the calcium nitrate. And again, I keep it out here in the greenhouse. And this back on here. Make sure it's zeroed out. And so we want... I'm going to do... Um, even though I got cucumbers in here, I am going to do it the tomato formula for the tomato plants. Because the cucumbers are, will do okay on it. So I need 10 ounces. And calcium nitrate you definitely want to keep in a sealed container out in the greenhouse otherwise it turns into one huge chunk. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to do the same thing mark on here for the calcium nitrate. So 
with nutrients, you want to make sure you don't overdo it. Get it all dissolved before I put it in the tank and we're good to go. Last thing we'll have to do is the pH adjust. have a pH meter or reader on this tank I just have it over there and I know when I filled up that tank the other day it took 24 ounces of my pH adjust I just get it out of my big nutrient tank and so I'm gonna go in the back get 24 ounces of pH adjust dump it in there and I'm good to go I mix the nutrients for my greenhouse. Everybody is different and how they mix things and what works for them. So you just have to experiment and see if, you know, if it works for you and uh, just take it from there. One more thing I wanted to note for everybody is that when tomatoes get to their third cluster, they do need some more potassium nitrate. So that will be added into the nutrient formula also. So at the end, you know, you'll be mixing three different types of nutrients. You have your hydro grow, your calcium nitrate, and then the potassium nitrate. So here's my pH controller, and um, what happens is I have to have two pumps in this tank because one pump is for the nutrients to come through here, and another pump is to pump the nutrients up here. And I have that pump on whenever I'm changing the air, putting the nutrients in and the pH adjust in, and that's how it registers. So the actual pH meter is inside of here. And then another thing we're going to do this year different is to get a 4 by 8 piece of um, plastic sealer, and we're going to cut it in half, and we're going to cut it in half for me, so I put a, a lid on each one of these tanks to keep the algae out. I just go ahead and keep these on the floor next to the uh, nutrient tank and whenever I have to um, add the nutrients in there I just you know, can measure them right out and ready to go. So everybody's probably wondering how often I have to do the nutrient tanks. Well in the winter time not very often because the plants are little and it's not really warm in here as it is in the summertime so nutrient tank will usually last about a week for me. In the summertime you know when the plants are bigger they're uptaking a lot more water and it gets really hot in here and sometimes it's two to three times a week I have to um, put uh, the nutrients in and I also just watch the plants that adjust my timer also my on and off times because sometimes in the summertime when it gets really sun hot and sunny in the uh, middle of the day I have it coming on every 30 minutes for like 20 30 seconds but everybody you know, like I said don't go by exactly what I say you just have to watch your plants and do what you think is best for them and the pH that the plants like usually is about 5.7 is where I try to keep it at and the EC since I don't have an EC meter but I know it's about 2.3 is what the EC is for tomato plants and of course they like a little bit warmer temperature to grow and so once it gets a little bit warmer here they'll start um, really taking off. There are filters coming off the tank for the nutrient water to make sure the emitters don't get clogged up. And this is a disc filter. Mom just cleaned this one. There's filters over here that are a little bit different. They're called screen filters, and you can tell they're all green and they need cleaned out. We just use warm water to wash these out. And then this little brush here works pretty good too. So the green stuff's coming out, but there's kind of like a buildup. How do you get that out? All of the calcium buildup and everything with the waters. Um, let's soak these in a little bit of uh, vinegar for a few minutes and I'll break it up. Screen's in there too. While those are soaking, we're going to string up these cucumbers today onto the bobbins because they are ready to go. They're getting big, they're starting to flop over a little bit. The first thing I'm gonna do is line up all these bobbins with the cucumbers. So I'll need two strings per bucket, and then I'm going to unwind the string so it's just right at the top of the bucket.
Now I need some vine clips. They're in here. So what I do is put the string right in this groove of the vine clip and it holds it in place. And then I'll clip it around the stem of the cucumber, like right here. And I just need to be very careful that I don't knock off these little tiny baby cucumbers, those right there. They still look a little flapped over, but they'll start growing upwards. And then these two right here are a little small still, so we'll come back and get these ones. This one though needs to go on a string. So these are the same clips that we use for the tomatoes too, but they probably still need a couple more weeks before they're ready to go up the strings. Okay, all done. Now I can go check on those filters. Mom's doing some seeding. What's your seeding? Carlton. Oh, nice. That's your favorite to harvest, isn't it? One of my favorites, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna see how these filters are doing. Okay, this should be pretty good. Yeah, I hope so. Vinegar worked pretty good. They're coming clean now. about the broccoli and cauliflower and they're growing slowly but surely those are broccolis broccoli and then cauliflower down here here's the rosy again and it's a lot more red since it's been sunny this week and then just past the rosy up here is the watercress and it's huge this is what is going to go to the csa this coming up week Back up here is the basil, and you can tell it's getting a little bit yellow right in the middle. And when this happens, mom will put just like one or two teaspoons of iron into the big reservoir, and that'll help it get greened up again. And over here in this bay is where the tatsoi was just the other day. So mom got these channels all cleaned out and planted dandelion greens in here now. The whole greenhouse is pretty full right now. There's just a section right here that needs cleaned out, but that'll get planted too. So still doing the CSA and growing stuff for ourselves. We are already thinking about the market with the tomatoes and the cucumbers and the beans. And by the way, the beans are already above the wire and touching the top of the greenhouse. Pretty crazy how fast they grow. Before I go, we're gonna open up this really big box. Last week, we placed an order for hanging basket supplies and Barrett and I drove down to Amish country to go pick it up. It's at a place called Yoder's Produce and we ordered hanging baskets and then some really good potting soil. So we usually make a trip down there probably once or twice a year just because they have really good stuff and really good prices. So we, um, we got these white baskets, so we're gonna check out and see what they look like. These should be the wire baskets with the cocoa liner. That box is really heavy too. So are the hangers in there then too? Yep, I see the hangers. Awesome. Oh, they're really heavy duty. Yes. Look how nice these are. I'm really excited because we can um, recycle those. So you, they have the cocoa liners that you could just buy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are really cool. They're not that big. Yeah, that, I think those are going to be perfect. Yeah, I think so too. I got the seeds in the mail yesterday too. Oh, so. good. Do you care if I put them in the seed fridge? No, you can put them in there. Okay. They'll stay good. 
But I didn't get everything we wanted. The seeds are selling out. Really? Oh no. Yeah. Everybody's home gardening. Yeah, I didn't get the colors, but I got um, those verbenas, and I got the super bells, and a bunch of petunias and impatience. So, Perfect. Yeah, I think we'll be able to make some good baskets. I think with so it. too. Yeah. All right, guys, we're done for the day. Mom's just doing one last run through the greenhouse to make sure everything's okay for the night. But like always, if you have any questions, leave us a comment. We appreciate you guys, and thanks for watching.